are the roots of what is now called the New Apostolic Reformation. Welcome, this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content related to cults and how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. So we are talking about the New Apostolic Reformation today, and we are digging into some of the roots because they didn't always go by that name. That was a name that was given to them by C. Peter Wagner, who has since passed on, and but they had precursors and things that were leading up into that movement in Pentecostalism. And so that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. So the latter reign, also known as the New Order or New Order of the Latter Reign, was a post-World War II movement within Pentecostal Christianity, which remains controversial to this day. For clarification and discussion of the Latter Reign, a distinction should be made between the Latter Reign Revival in 1948 through 1952, the Latter Reign Movement 1952 to the 1960s, and Sharon Schools, which is Global Missions, other groups influenced by the Latter Reign. The Latter Rain movement had its beginnings in the years following World War II and was contemporary with the evangel evangelical awakening led by Billy Graham, as well as the healing revival of Oral Roberts, Jack Coe, and William Branham, several leaders of the small Pentecostal Sharon Orphanage in North Battleford, Saskatchewan, were inspired to look for a deeper dimension of Christianity after visiting Branham's meeting. They began to fast and pray in search of it. Later that year, groups organized large revivals events and news quickly swept across Canada and the United States, influencing many Pentecostal believers. As the revival died down after the, a few years, those who had been changed by the doctrine formed various groups which became known as the Latter Rain Movement. The Latter Rain strongly emphasized relational networks over organizational structure. So you can see right there that that is still the way that the new apostolic reformation functions. There is no headquarters. There is no central structure or organization or government or anything like that. It is a networking of pastors that are like-minded and are willing to submit one to another within the movement. In addition, the term latter rain has become somewhat of a pejorative label. Therefore, many ministers who are influenced by it are reluctant to make this well known. They often choose to emphasize only formal participation. So that's also uh, an equivalent because if you ask most people, are you a part of the New Apostolic Reformation? They would say, absolutely not. There, and in fact, some even deny, like Michael Brown flat out just tries to deny the very existence of such a thing. But you can go on the websites and you can even submit an application to become a prophet or apostle within the movement. And so it is crazy how much like flat out uh, denial and lying that is going on within this movement. Much of the movement, along with the elements of the healing revival, slowly devolved, dissolved into parts of the larger charismatic movement. Latter rain emphasizes emphasis are some of the most notable differences between Pentecostals and Charismatics, as delineated, for example, by the Assemblies of God USA in their 2000 position paper on end time revival. The movement was rejected by classical Pentecostal denominations. This should not be confused with earlier movements or ideas within Pentecostalism, including the latter rain assemblies in South Africa begun in 1927. Distinctions should also be made between various groups with the latter rain influences and the Sharon schools, also known as Global Missions Organization, which has camp meetings, grounds, and North Battleford, where the revival and movement both originated. So the, another influencer is the third wave of Pentecostalism led by John Wimber in the Vineyard Movement of the 80s. The neo-charismatic, also third wave third wave charismatic or hyper charismatic movement is a movement within evangelical Protestant Christianity which places emphasis on the use of charismata or spiritual gifts such as glossolalia, prophecy, divine healing, and divine revelation, which are believed to be given to them by the Holy Spirit. The neo-charismatic movement is considered to be the third wave of the charismatic Christian tradition which began with Pentecostalism, the third wave, the first wave, and was furthered by the evangelical charismatic movement, the second 
second wave. Neocharismatics are now believed to be more numerous than the first and second wave categories, combined as a result of the growth of post-denominational independent charismatic groups. As of 2002, there was estimated to be approximately 295 million adherents or participants in the neocharismatic movement. In terms of congregational governance, no single form, structure, or style of church service characterizes all neocharismatic services and churches. They consider themselves part of the non-denominational Christianity. The general definition calls them Christian bodies with Pentecostal-like experiences that have no traditional Pentecostal or charismatic denominational connections, and sometimes only very slender is seldom is if any historical connections. These doctrines are often considered to be defining characteristics of the neo-charismatic movement. Dominionism, which we just talked about in the Seven Mountain video that I just released, often specifically the Kingdom Now variant. Direct revelation from God to Christians today through prophecy, dreams, or visions. That's a new apostolic reformation all over it. Five-fold ministry distinct from standard evangelical doctrine due to the belief that the office of apostle and prophet should exist in the church today. Healing in or by the atonement, which states that the substitutionary atonement of Christ through the crucifixion atoned not just for sins, but also for sickness and injury through divine healing and a power evangelism and signs and wonders, which is why uh, there is not a complete overlap. And a lot of people mistake this. The word of faith movement is separate from the new apostolic Reformation movement, just like there are still people within the Vineyard movement um, or Calvary Chapel movement or Assemblies of God movement, um, but those are distinct from one another. And so New Apostolic Reformation is distinct, but there's a lot of overlap. So a lot of Word of Faith churches and pastors are part of the New Apostolic Reformation and the new, but the new apostolic reformation is not synonymous with the word of faith. And it, there, there are churches that are way outside of um, any of those that are part of the new apostolic reformation. And so, if you had any insights or questions on something that I did not cover, then go ahead and put those in the comments down below. And I'll be checking back to see what you have to say, and I'll be choosing some for next week's Q&A. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, give a thumbs up on this video if you like the content for the day, and share this video with others in your life who uh, enjoy material on cults and how to share the gospel with them. And of course, check out my new Patreon page. Lots of incentives at every level on their schools to work towards my next project. You all know about sharing Jesus with the Colts at this point. And um, so you can pick that up on Amazon. But this, I'm just beginning work on the next project. And you can check out all the information about that on the, my Patreon page or ask me and I'll throw it into a Q&A video. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.